All right, here we go. Got my milk down here. It is warmed up. Make sure that it's not hot. You don't wanna hurt them, okay? So what we've got here, let's see if it'll even latch. Come on, baby, you can do this. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Starkey Farmstead. My name is Samantha, and today's topic is what do you do with the babies when the mom won't feed them? So I came home today to one day old baby kits, and something I noticed was the mother had not fed her babies at all since they were born. How did I know this? A couple of things that you're going to need to look for. Is she a new mom? Did she pull her fur willingly to cover her babies? And is she seen calm in the pen? Okay, so for us, this is a first time mom. Something we noticed was she had two boxes inside of her pen where she only had about a four inch break between the two boxes. And this normally helps our new moms make it into a box because there's not much room left between the two boxes. It's uncomfortable to be in that space. So they pick box A or box B when they go in labor and they deliver their babies. Well, this new mom squished herself between the two boxes and delivered on the wire. We lost two kids off to flip. So we got the six kids up, put into the cleanest of the two boxes, took the other box out. So then we're like, okay, she's gonna get it. She didn't pull fur. So we pulled around the dewlap, which is a fold underneath the neck. And when a new mom is pregnant, that fur comes out very easy. It actually is a hormone that she releases in her body and her fur around that dewlap comes out. And that's what she uses to put on top of her babies. Well, we had to pull her fur for her yesterday. This morning, the babies were all moving around quite nicely. We thought maybe she had just finished feeding came back several hours later to check on them, three of the babies were dead. The other three had been uncovered and were very, very cold. So this video is dedicated to show you guys what did I do to save the last three kids? How did I raise their temperature? And how did I get some food into them? And now what am I gonna do with these beautiful babies whose mother neglected them? So let's go see and I'm gonna show you with some video of what I did to save these baby rabbits' lives. I've got them on a towel that I warmed up in the dryer prior to putting them on there because here's the thing, everybody. Their body temperature was very, very low. And if I put them on a cold towel, on a cold heating pad to heat it up to get them ready, right? To warm them up their body temperature is going to drop further. So what I did was I warmed up the towel in the dryer until it was good and warm. I turned the heating pad on high, laid the towel on that, put them inside the towel and gently covered them. All right, here we go. Got my milk down here. It is warmed up. Make sure that it's not hot. You don't want to hurt them, okay? So what we've got here, let's see if it'll even latch. Come on, baby, you can do this. There you go. Come on, let's get you in a better situation. Look what I've got, look what Sam's got. Come on, sweetheart, you can do this. Usually if you can just get a little bit in their mouth, they'll lick. Yeah, I know, baby. Try to get your syringe into their little mouth. Now be very careful. It'll come back out their nose if you squeeze too fast. All right, baby number two, kit number two. And I'm having to do this in my house where I can regulate the temperature in the air. I can't take them outside, so I'm a apologizing ahead of time for the lighting situation. Oh, look, this one's trying to latch on. Now I wanna point a few things out about this kit that if you've never raised rabbits, you need to understand. The mothers, all of the mothers are extremely rough with these babies. If you look right here, 
Do you see that on its eye? This one may have lost that eye. Look on this side. You see how the eyes just sealed, sealed shut? Oh, uh, this one's definitely trying to nurse. But you see that mark on that eye? That's actually from a toenail. And something I'm noticing about the ones that are still alive, let me show you on this side real quick. Do you see the mark right here on the cheek? So she was really rough stepping on these babies. And uh, this one probably has lost that eye. So sometimes when you go to buy rabbits from people or you see rabbits that only have one eye, it's not for lack of care on our part, but the mothers can be extremely rough. And if they're a bad mom, they'll just walk all over them. I mean, it's just how they are guys. And rabbit toenails get really long, really quick. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. So just kind of work it into the side. It's not real easy. Like I said, you want to make sure that you don't get milk in the nose, okay? But you do have to get them to realize that what you've got is a little bit of milk here. There we go. There we go. That's what you want to see, that little tongue working. Once that starts to happen, these guys are going to warm up and they're going to start getting some strength back. They just need a nest. Now we use wood shavings here and let me explain to you why. We used to use hay and what we found was when you have bigger litters and you have more kits, they move around more. And occasionally we would have a kit or two get to the back of the box and literally get caught in the hay like it was ropes. And we would find them passed away two or three days later when we would do head counts. We would notice that one was missing or two were missing and we'd find them wrapped up in the hay. So when you're losing one or two kits every, you know, three or four deliveries, that begins to add up and you need to change your system. So we tried shredded paper for a while and I just didn't like it. It was too absorbent and it didn't dry out fast enough. So I felt like it kept them too damp. So what we did was we went to wood chips. Now you can use the large or the small, but I like to use things that I can multi-purpose. Since we raise quail and we have to incubate hatch those quail, they need quail have to be on small wood shavings or you will bow their legs. So that is a free tip also. So we just use those same small wood chips now for our nesting boxes. It's what works best for us us and then I can compost those wood chips back into my chicken coop. So I'm using sustainable loop systems. Like I said, I'm real big on multi-purposing as many things on my farm as possible. So if I got the large wood chips for the nesting boxes and the small wood chips for the quail, now I'm double buying and I don't need to do that. So I simply buy the small wood chips, the shavings, and that's what goes in my nesting boxes as well into my grow out areas for my quail. This was the new mom. All right, so as you can see, there's not a lot of fur in this nesting box. And this is basically how we found them. All of them right up in this area, uncovered. Now guys, that's an indicator that she's not going to care for her kits. Now this is Doe too. She is also a first time mom. Look at the amount of fur in this nesting box. Do you see that? It's like a cloud of fur. All six of her babies are alive and doing well. She not only had them in the box, she immediately covered them and she is obviously nursing them because you see a lot of movement of that fur back there. Now, the reason I showed you these two first time mothers is to tell you what I'm gonna do with the babies now. Doe five, her three remaining kits, what I did was I took a handful of Doe 2's fur from the other nesting box, took it inside, laid it on top of the babies that are under the towel on the heating pad. This is what I wanted to show you guys. This is what I was just explaining to you. This is their new mom, their adoptive mom's fur. See that? I got it covering them so that they will be scented just like the babies that she has in her nesting box right now.
there's a reason I did that, guys. I want them to smell like the babies in her box. So I'm gonna keep them laying in her fur for a couple of hours. And when my husband gets home, I'm gonna let him rub his scent all over these brand new three babies that don't belong to Doe 2. What that's gonna do is after he rubs them all over himself, he's gonna go into her nesting box and do a live baby count, essentially covering all of her babies in his scent. And then we're gonna tuck them in to the nesting box with Doe 2 and we're gonna put a tiny black mark on the back of their heads. Now this mark will only last for about four or five days, but what it's gonna do is gonna let me know if these babies lived, because they all look alike at this age, guys. And we're gonna track to see how well she does with these three transfer babies. Now I have another doe down here this black and white one, my little Californian, she's a great mom. And she has adopted babies from other rabbits who have delivered within a day or two of her when for whatever reason, the mother just wasn't a good mom or it just seemed like we had a couple of babies that were lagging because she had really huge litters because it's not uncommon for us to have 13 in a litter once we get past the first litter. Now your first litter is always gonna be a little bit smaller and you have to be careful with your moms because you don't know how they're gonna how they're gonna be and i'm saying this because doe five right here comes from good stock but she's proving to be a really bad mom but she's also a first time mom so we're gonna have a little grace for her she had them on the wire she didn't cover them and then she didn't feed them so i'm gonna rebreed her next week and i'm gonna give her one more shot and guys, if this mom does this again, I will not sell her, I will cull her. Because why would I want that in my group? I have a big group, a big nursery going on right now. It's winter, so we bring them into the shop. It's an unheated, uninsulated shop, but it cuts the wind. So I can keep all my breeding moms right here together. I can keep an eye on their babies. I can keep an eye on them. It's very easy for me. And then I'm out of the weather too, while I'm doing the care and stewarding them the way they need to be stewarded. We have our rabbitry across for grow outs and stuff, but we're not there yet. So all these are, are pregnant or breastfeeding, right? Why would I keep a rabbit that's not going to feed her young? It's okay to miss the box with your first litter. It's okay to be a little slow on pulling your fur. It is not okay that you did not feed your babies. So that is something we're gonna really keep an eye on when it comes to her because I have a bad feeling about her. I've never had a rabbit do this in the three years that we have been breeding rabbits. Now, Doe 2 is, like I said, also a new mom, but she seems to be doing amazing. She pulled her own fur, she got her babies in the box, and she's obviously nursing them. So your next question might be, well, how do I know if she's nursing them? Because you're probably never gonna catch her in the box actually feeding her babies unless she's very comfortable with you. Because in the wild, they only go back to their nest once or twice a day, all right? They don't sleep with their babies. They're not dogs, they're rabbits. And in the wild, if they keep going back to their nest, they might actually bring predators to their young who are defenseless. So these moms have natural instinct. Now, a lot of natural instinct has been bred out of livestock, but this is not one of them. You're not really going to catch her nursing her babies. So how do you know if she's actually feeding them? It's very simple, guys. If she has not fed those babies, they will die within the first 36 hours. Able to give them a little supplemental milk, while I was covering them in the fur of doe too so that I could change boxes with them. It's just knowing these little bit of tidbits about rabbits that can help you save a litter. So what Steven's doing right now is we've got the new babies. He's gonna reach into the pen. Sorry about oh, having to- Goodness gracious, yeah. you got pop a pair. And he, just move it all to one side, babe. He's gonna do a well baby check on the baby she has. Sorry about having to do this through the pens, but it's the only way I can do it. 
He's rubbing his hands all over the babies, all in her fur, getting his scent everywhere, which is what we want. We want his scent to override any lingering scent on these new babies from the other mother. All right, now he's gonna transfer these babies in there. I don't want to do it like this. Oh, these are so much smaller. She never fed these poor babies. Get him. Now see what he's doing? Look at the difference, guys. This is 24 hours in age difference. And you can tell how much fatter these, these babies that have been fed are. Look at that. Look at that size difference. And then he's gonna rub her fur and he's gonna stick them back in the nest. And we've got our three marked and we will keep an eye on them to see if they survive. Going 24 to 30 hours without food, they may not. But all we can do is say a prayer over them, which we will. He's gonna cover them all back up with her fur. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you allow these babies to survive. Now he's gonna rub the mom, remind her of his scent, let her know it's him, that she's safe, and praying she will accept all of these babies. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, look at the amount of fur in there. Look at that. Lots and lots of fur. If you look at her, you wouldn't even know that she pulled any. And there's still fur all inside of her pen with her. Now look at the amount of fur in this box. You see that? It's really not that much. And she put hay in there, which can be a problem. Just remember, there are warning signs that you might have trouble with that rabbit. For most of the problems you come across, you can think through solutions for those, but not feeding your young is not one of them. We really hope that this video showed you some things that you didn't already know about rabbits and just helped you think through some of the problems that you might've seen. We thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell us about your experiences with your rabbits. Here comes the baby goat. We thank you for rowing in our boat and letting us row in yours. You guys have a blessed day. I have a lot on my plate to get finished today. But like I said, I really do hope this video helped you. I learned something today. I learned quite a few things, but it's okay. If she doesn't breed well the second time, she won't be on this farm much longer. See so you guys, enjoy your day. Thank you for watching Storky Farmstead.